Hello everyone, welcome back to Rotor Dynamics 101. Today we'll dive into the fascinating world of airfoil bearing design, a critical technology used in high-speed rotating machinery like blowers, microturbines, and aerospace systems. Let's start with the basics. Here are two examples of airfoil bearings. On the left, you see the radial bearing, it supports the rotating shaft. On the right, a thrust bearing, which supports the actual load. Here is what these parts looks like in real life. And a close-up shows the layered structure that gives them the unique properties. As the name suggests, gas foil bearing operates using a very thin film of gas, usually air, and a combination of flexible foils. These types include top foil, bump foil, and bottom foil. The bottom foil is optional as some bearing design does not use this layer. The top foil is often coated with Teflon, the same material used to coat the surface of frying pan. This coating helps to reduce friction during startup and shutdown. The bump foil can either be spot welded directly to the housing or in some design, it's welded to the bottom foil, then assembled into a groove inside the bearing housing. A dowel pin is typically used to lock everything in place. If you are interested in these designs, full CAD models, detailed drawings, and manufacturing instructions are available in the production link in the description. One of the simplest way to manufacture bump foil is with a die tool. You place a metal sheet between a top and bottom die and apply the pressure to emboss the bump pattern. But there are also many advanced method and geometries like what you see here. Companies like Capstan and Bosch have adopted more advanced design using foil spring instead of bump foils. Capstan's foil springs are less prone to plastic deformation under heavy loads, making them more durable in a demanding applications. The configuration remains simple. The top foil and foil springs are inserted into a machine slot inside the bearing housing. Again, you can download the full CAD model and drawings for this leaf type foil spring bearings from the link below and feel free to email me with any questions. Here is the thrust bearing. It's made up of multiple layers top foil coated with Teflon, bump foil and spacers, and back foil which supports the structure and where the bumps are spot welded. As always, CAD models and detailed drawings are available in the description. Foil bearings are typically designed to rotate in one direction to maintain the wedge effect required for stable operation. As shown in this model, the radial bearing includes an arrow indicating the intended direction of shaft rotation. When mounting the bearing on the opposite end of the shaft, the geometry must be mirrored. The left and right radial bearings are not identical and must be installed accordingly to maintain proper function. The same principle applies to the thrust bearings. The left and right thrust bearing assemblies are mirror image of each other to ensure correct wedge formation and effective load support in a single rotational direction. So how do they actually work? When the shaft begins to spin, a thin gas film forms between the shaft and the foil due to the wedge effect. This pressure lifts the shaft, allowing non-contact operation at high speeds. The bearing design ensures the leading edge of the foil has a larger gap, and the trailing edge has a smaller gap, ensuring the pressure buildup. Let's summarize the advantage and disadvantage. The pros is that the foil bearing enables very low power consumption simple mechanical configuration, and ideal for long duration, continuous use. 
The disadvantage is that the wear of top foil during startup and shutdown. The top foil wear typically occurs during the startup and shutdown before sufficient lift force is generated to separate the shaft from the foil surface. Here is an example of a brand new top foil. After multiple start stop cycles, visible wear marks begin to appear. Over time with continuous cycling, the wear becomes more pronounced. Eventually, excessive wear can compromise the foil integrity, as shown in this photo. At that point, bearing replacement is needed. Also, the disadvantage of airfoil bearing is the lower load capacity than traditional oil lubricated bearings. For design purpose, it is recommended to keep the unit load under 5 psi. To calculate this, take the total weight of your rotor and impeller and divide by the bearing area, which is the diameter times length. This gives you the unit load. Some applications have successfully operated at 8 psi, but every case is unique and load limits should be evaluated carefully. Gas foil bearings are especially useful in applications that requires continuous long duration operation without frequent start and stop. Water treatment plants often use them in a high speed blowers and micro gas turbines like those in Capstan's power unit burn natural gas to generate electricity and run for long hours. In aerospace, Honeywell uses airfoil bearings in their air cycling machines. That's it for today's overview of gas foil bearings. If you are interested in CAD models and design packages for radial thrust bearings or foil spring type bearings, check the links in the description below. Or shoot me an email if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next videos.